So the next topic of our discussion is renal cell carcinoma. So renal cell carcinoma is actually the malignant proliferation of tubular epithelial cells. Renal cell carcinoma is more common in males than the females, the ratio being 3 ratio 1. The tumor is mostly discovered in the late age of 60 to 70 years. The risk factors for the renal cell carcinoma include smoking, which increases the risk of renal cell carcinoma by two times. Moreover, there is obesity and hypertension and unopposed estrogen therapy. Unopposed estrogen therapy means only therapy with estrogen without progesterone. So unopposed estrogen therapy predisposes to renal cell carcinoma. Heavy metals such as lead, mercury toxicity and asbestos also increase the risk of renal cell carcinoma. Moreover, cystic diseases also increase the chances of renal cell carcinoma in certain cases. Renal cell carcinoma is classified into further subtypes on basis of their histological appearance. The first and the most common is clear cell carcinoma, then there is papillary carcinoma, chromophobe renal carcinoma and collecting ducts carcinoma. So clear cell carcinoma is the most common type of renal cell carcinoma and it constitutes almost 70 to 80 percent of all renal cell carcinomas. The main gene involved in nuclear cell carcinoma is VHL gene which normally encodes a protein which is part of ubiquitin ligase complex. So this complex degrades certain proteins one of which is transcription factor for hypoxia induced factor 1. Hypoxia induced factor 1 normally protects the cells and increases their life in cases of hypoxia. So when VHL gene is mutated there is inefficient ubiquitin ligase complex formation which results in an increased hypoxia inducible factor 1 under normal conditions. So what it does is it activates a gene known as VEGF gene which causes angiogenesis. HIF1 also increases the expression of insulin like growth factor 1 or IGF1 gene which results in uncontrolled growth. Moreover, there is another gene which is known as MYC gene which is also activated by HIF1. MYC gene causes alterations in the metabolism to favor uncontrolled growth. So all these factors ultimately result in the formation of tumor or renal cell carcinoma of clear cell type. So coming on towards the morphology, the clear cell carcinoma is solitary and it is present in only one kidney mostly. The external surface of the kidney appears to be distorted because of underlying tumor. The cut section reveals a spherical mass. As you can see here in this picture, this is a spherical mass of clear cell carcinoma. The color is yellowish due to presence of lipids inside the cells and the margins are well defined. As you can see here, this is the tumor. It is easy to differentiate the tumor from the normal parenchyma of the kidney. Coming on towards the histology. So while explaining the histological picture of any tumor, the first thing you have to know is the pattern. So the tumor cells form solid, cord-like or tubular growth pattern. The next point is the explanation of the tumor cells. So the tumor cells are round or they may be polygonal. These cells have abundant clear cytoplasm or the cytoplasm may be granular which is due to presence of glycogen and lipids. As you can see here, these are the clear cells with the abundant cytoplasm and these cells are mostly well differentiated but nuclear ATPI is present in certain cases. The third point is about the mitotic bodies which are always present in the malignant tumor and absent in benign tumors. The fourth point is the focal necrosis which is also a hallmark of malignancy and it is absent in almost all of the benign tumors. The fifth or the last point is a specific identification pattern. So the renal cell carcinoma may invade the renal vein causing left-sided varicocele. 
the pattern of invasion is called as the bird feed pattern or arborizing pattern the tumor might also extend into vena cava and then into right heart the second most common variation of renal cell carcinoma is papillary cell carcinoma which accounts to almost 10 to 15% cases of renal cell carcinoma and it is most frequently seen in trisomy 7 in familial cases and loss of y chromosome in sporadic cases so the main gene involved in familial cases is met gene or met gene which is present on chromosome 7 so in trisomy 7 there are multiple copies of met gene causing a gain of function mutation so met gene increases the tyrosine kinase receptors for hepatocyte growth factor which results in the increased and uncontrolled growth of the tubular cells resulting in the formation of tumor so other than met gene papillary carcinoma also has tp53 gene and rb gene mutations which are also tumor suppressor genes the papillary carcinoma are mostly multifocal and they can also be present in both the kidneys the histological picture reveals papillary growth pattern which means tumor cells form finger like projections known as papilla these papilla are composed of cuboidal cells or low columnar cells so the cell type is cuboidal or low columnar as you can see here these are the papilla and these are cuboidal cells moreover there are interstitial foam cells as well within the papillary cores as you can see here these are the foam cells so what are the foam cells foam cells are actually the macrophages which are overloaded with lipids so the third point is the focal necrosis which is a hallmark of malignancy and the fourth point is presence of mitotic bodies so these mitotic bodies are present in the malignant tumors and absent in benign tumors the specific feature of papillary cell carcinoma is presence of concentric calcifications these are the concentric calcifications which are known as samoma bodies these samoma bodies are also present in thyroid papillary carcinoma the less common types of renal cell carcinomas include chromophobe carcinoma and collecting duct carcinoma so the pattern in chromophobe carcinoma is, is solid sheets of cells and these cells are pale eosinophilic cells with perinuclear halos so let's say these are the cells and this is the nucleus the halos are round circles present around the nuclei the cells are often binuclear this is a binuclear cell and the large cells are present mostly around the blood vessels so like all the malignant tumors mitosis or mitotic bodies are present and necrosis is also present a very rare form of renal cell carcinoma is collecting duct carcinoma which is composed of highly atypical epithelial cells which are derived from the collecting ducts these cells form a hobnail pattern this is a hobnail pattern so the renal cell carcinoma presents with atypical symptoms such as costovertebral pain hematuria and palpable mass in the abdomen so all these three features are present in almost 10% of the cases of renal cell carcinoma only when the size of tumor is greater than 10 cm moreover there is history of weight loss due to increased metabolism and renal cell carcinomas also present with paraneoplastic syndromes such as hypercalcemia cushing syndrome polycythemia and hypertension so what is paraneoplastic syndrome paraneoplastic syndrome means a tumor which starts to secrete certain hormones which perform the normal functions in the body along with the normal glands so another feature of renal cell carcinoma is that they are mostly discovered when the tumor has already metastasized so almost 50 percent of the cases of renal cell carcinoma metastasize in lungs and 33 percent of the cases metastasize in bone other sites of metastasis include lymph nodes brain and adrenal glands the definite diagnosis is established on histopathology and radiological studies are also essential to know the extent of the tumor and metastasis such as ct scan and mri the treatment of choice for renal cell carcinoma is radical nephrectomy and often partial nephrectomy is also performed when the tumor has not metastasized 
and the size is less than 4 cm. So this concludes our discussion about renal cell carcinoma. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.